Today I am watching Matthew from This Is Me. He's doing the booktube weather tag. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. So I picked this up as a buddy read with Bobby Buttons and somebody else. I don't know who I read it with. I'll try and put that in the, in the description below. I'm sorry about that. I'm very bad at remembering who I agree to read things with. So this is Gillian Flynn's first book. I've previously read Gone Girl, which I notoriously didn't like. And I also read The Grown Ups, which is a novella, which I did like. So I was intrigued by this. So I'm going to read the blurb. It's been a while, but Camille Preka has finally gone home. Sent to investigate the disappearance of two little girls, Camille finds herself reluctantly installed in the family mansion, reacquainting herself with her distant mother and a precocious 13-year-old half-sister she barely knows. Haunted by a family tragedy, troubled by the disquieting grip her young sister has on the town, Camille struggles with a familiar need to be accepted. But as clues turn into dead ends, Camille finds herself identifying with the young victims and realises she will have to unravel the puzzle of her own past if she's to survive this homecoming. So, my thoughts on this book, basically it was pretty much a generic thriller. I do think there's something about the way that Gillian Flynn writes that reminds me of Stephen King, actually, and he even blurbed it. He said, to say this is a terrific debut novel is really too mild. Uh, it is pretty good for a debut, I would say. I did enjoy it more than Gone Girl. I didn't think it was fantastic. Honestly, I think it's not really going to stick with me. I think give it two months and I'm not going to remember. Basically, it is. it is. It's a pretty much a generic thriller about this reporter who goes back to her hometown in America. And uh, if you like small town American vibes, you will like this. I'm pretty sure Harriet Rosie likes that. So maybe this is a thriller she should read. But... It's very much that kind of trope of the, you know, small town girl gone big and then has to return to her roots and something weird's going on. And the other thing that I would say about it is it's really, really dark. Like, you get to about 80 pages in and you realise where Sharp Objects gets its title from. Basically, self-harm trigger warnings throughout this book, child abuse trigger warnings, child rape and murder trigger warnings... She has she has sex with a policeman at some point, so that might trigger you if you if you don't like cops. I don't, I don't or sex. I don't really know. What I did have a problem with here, and it's because Flynn is known for it. She does she'll do a twist and then she'll do another twist, and so it's to, at the point where now I expect it with her books, and I accidentally kind of predicted what was going to happen without meaning to. I I honestly didn't mean to. I went into this just thinking I'm just going to let it wash over me, and we'll just get to the end. And then it did start to drag after a while, so I was like, I'm going to have to start getting emotionally involved in the story and try to figure it out. So I tried to figure it out, and I figured it out by accident, but I, I didn't just figure out the first one, I figured out the second twist as well. I don't actually really know what you would say, because for a thriller, it wasn't that thrilling. Like, it was more, um, it reminded me more of like a character study of the inhabitants of this town. And I guess, like, an introspective look at this main character herself, who is a self-harmer, and she's had this rough, you know, rough upbringing and stuff. And that was much, more, given much more airtime than the actual story itself. To the point where you've got these, like, long meetings where all these, you know, all these women are just meeting up and just gossiping about who they think did it. And you're just like, I, I don't care what these, what gossip these women have, you know. I do like some of the bits of writing, so there's a little story about the town here. So they talk about Calhoun, one of their heroes. He was, he was a hero, he was a hero for the South during the, the Civil War, but still he was a hero. Calhoun himself died in 1929 as he closed in on his centennial birthday. He was sitting at a gazebo, which is now gone, in the town square, which has been paved over, being fated by a big brass band, when suddenly he leaned into his 52-year-old wife and said, It's all too loud. Then he had a massive coronary and pitched forward in his chair, smudging his Civil War finery and the tea cakes that had been decorated with the stars and bars just for him. I have a special fondness for Calhoun. Sometimes it is all too loud. So one thing I should point out that you'll have noticed from that is that this is told in first person. The problem with that, Flynn just does it with her books. She doesn't write likeable main characters. But the problem, the problem that I have is that it, her, her, her actual writing and then plots itself don't do enough for me to offset the unlikable main character. So. I always have to dock a little bit for that. I, some of my enjoyment has just gone because I don't like this character and I want bad things to happen to them. And nothing that bad really even happened to her as well. But in this, she, I started liking her. 
And then by the end, I was just like, God damn, I hate this woman. One thing I did like, actually, which may not be relevant to most people, but for me, certainly, I've been reading recently books about factory farming because it's been researched for a novel I'm writing. And I didn't realise until I picked this up, but there is a fair little amount about factory farming in here. And, uh, you know, Flynn's definitely done her research. I'm going to read this. This is a big, long paragraph. The Capisi home sat on the edge of the low-rent section to the far east of town, a cluster of broken-down two-bedroom houses, most of whose inhabitants work at the nearby pig factory farm, a private operation that delivers almost 2% of the country's pork. Find a poor person in Wind Gap, and they'll almost always tell you they work at the farm, and so did their old man. On the breeding side, there are piglets to be clipped and crated, sows to be impregnated and penned, manure pits to be managed. The killing side's worse. Some employees load the pigs, forcing them down the gangway where stunners await. Others grab the back legs, fasten the catch around them, release the animal to be lifted, squealing and kicking upside down. They cut the throats with pointy slaughter knives, the blood spattering thick as paint onto the tile floors, then onto the scalding tank. The constant screams, frantic metallic squeals, drive most of the workers to wear earplugs and they spend their days in a soundless rage. At night they drink and play music, loud. The local bar, Healers, serves nothing pork related, only chicken tenders which are, presumably, processed by equally furious factory workers in some other crappy town. Okay, this is definitely a trigger warning bit, but I do think it was well written, so this is, this is where we find out where the title comes from, I guess. I am a cutter, you see. Also a snipper, a slicer, a carver, a jabber. I am a very special case. I have a purpose. My skin, you see, screams. It's covered with words. Cook, cupcake, kitty, curls. As if a knife-wielding first grader learned to write on my flesh. I sometimes, but only sometimes, laugh. Getting out of the bath and seeing, out the corner of my eye, down the side of a leg, baby doll. Pulling on a sweater and, in a flash of my wrist, harmful. Why these words? Thousands of hours of therapy have yielded a few ideas from the good doctors. They are often feminine, in a Dick and Jane, pink versus puppy dog tail sort of way. Or they're flat out negative. Number of synonyms for anxious carved on my skin? Eleven. The one thing I know is for sure is that at the time, it was crucial to see these letters on me. And not just see them, but feel them. Burning on my left hip. Petticoat. I just think it's interesting. I mean, the characterization is good. I just didn't like the character, but... Maybe that's the point. There's a bit here as well, another bit about factory farming. So it said, Amma parked her cart next to a pickup and dusted herself off. Then with a business like Beeline, she walked straight past the slaughtering house, past the lines of pig holds, those wet pink snouts squirming between the air slats, and to a big metal barn of a building where the nursing happens. Most sows are repeatedly inseminated, brood after brood, till their bodies give way and they go to slaughter. But while they're still useful, they're made to nurse. Scrap it strapped to their sides in a farrowing crate, legs apart, nipples exposed. Pigs are extremely smart, sociable creatures, and this forced assembly line intimacy makes the nursing cells want to die, which as soon as they dry up, they do. Even the idea of this practice I find repulsive, but the sight of it actually does something to you, makes you less human, like watching a rape and saying nothing. The, this is one of the reasons why I didn't like this woman, so she said, uh, here, if I got a little too drunk tonight and was out of my head and had sex with four guys, that would be rape. Legally, I don't know. It'd depend on a lot of things, like your attorney. But ethically, hell yes. You're sexist. What? You're sexist. I'm so sick of liberal lefty men practicing sexual discrimination under the guise of protecting women against sexual discrimination. She had just had this very leading conversation with him, and then she had sex with him as well, and I'm just like, I don't understand. I don't understand this woman. You'll know by now whether this sounds like something you're interested in. If you're not really into into thrillers, it's probably not going to be your kind of book. I... It was fine. It was fine. I, I, okay, a rating time. I gave it 3.75 out of 5, I think. Actually, no, I'm going to lower that. I'm going to give it 3.5 out of 5. It just... It just didn't leave much of an impression on me. It didn't engage me to the point in which I really cared about any of the characters or what was going on and when you're in a thriller and you don't care about the characters it's kind of like what's the point of reading it you know like and actually again i wouldn't even say it was that it wasn't even that thrilling i mean it says here creepy stylish and gripping by guardian i don't know i wouldn't use those three adjectives adjectives i don't think i already can't really remember the names of the characters there were two of them whose names began with a it also comes with this weird bit at the end actually where it's got Got your acknowledgements, then you got your reading notes, which basically just recap the entire story, presumably for if you weren't paying much attention. And then some discussion questions, like... Do you think there is any significance to the letter A in sharp objects? 
think of Camille's family in particular. So yeah, and then suggested further reading Dolores Claiborne by Stephen King, along with some others. But I personally would say read Dolores Claiborne. And uh, yeah, that, that was a better book than this, I think. But it was fine. It was, for a, for a debut novel, it was pretty good. And yeah, I mean, I've got Dark Places left now to read by Gillian Flynn. And I don't know. I think my favourite so far has still been The Grown Ups, then probably this, then Gone Girl. But both this and Gone Girl kind of dragged a bit, whereas The Grown Up I did enjoy. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.